doesn't look good. Well, here we are. It's still not too late. She doesn't look good. Gil's one of the best rounded directors I've ever worked with. He handles every aspect of directing. Some directors spin a wild story through their camera techniques and these kind of things and really don't get the best performances out of their actors. This is a performance piece. I mean, you know, it's, and uh, because of the uh, difficulty of it taking place in such a glass jar, uh, it poses a lot of problems for a director in, in, in variety and, and building the arc and the tension of the story. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just been so well prepared. I think we say Don't be stupid. What? It's not that easy. In for a penny, in for a pound. We really don't have a choice. We watch TV and wait. It's always the same thing. Nobody takes us seriously. Look at us. I think independent filmmaking allows for the best environment to make the best films. Now they're talking about shooting at night. They, they can't get enough. Somebody has taken more than their money. They've taken their time and their guts and they're putting it on the line to make something that they want to make. You hear that? You hear that? There's a lot of laughing going on. Oh, gee, they think it's funny. They're celebrated. They're celebrated, and I'm here tortured. I do um, a lot of independent film work, and that's actually my passion. I, I really believe that uh, for a lot of actors, that's where we get a chance to spread our wings and fly, because the chances you're able to take in an independent film you know, dwarf anything that the studios can do because they have to make money. And that's why I like getting together with people like this and coming in and being able to do whatever, you know, we want to do without being restricted. And it's, it makes it a lot of fun. What are you? I beg your pardon? Sir. Your nationality. What are you? You're not French-Canadian. No, I'm, I'm... No, sir, I'm, I'm an Italian-American. Italian? I love Italy. Ever been? I think what Sterling Pacific brings to the table is uh, a group of filmmakers that, that care about the film and, and what they're making. They're able to, to, to really see the vision the director wants and, and they're able to do their jobs and, and do them well. I'm afraid to go back on set. They're talking about scenes and things that I can't even imagine. I'm, they're blowing things up and shots from the universe and... <laughs> People should see this thing because they're not going to believe it. It's because there's, they've probably never seen anything like this. In fact, I can guarantee you that this is something you've never seen before. Set. Action! What's with Doggy? How am I supposed to know? Is he sharpening his claws? You're kidding, right? What? This, this serve as a documentary and documentation of what's going on here and how... You hear things kind of crashing beyond that wall? And that's a cut. Cut. I would like a larger position. <laughs> Is that gun big enough for you? I think that Gil, the writer, the director, Gil Wadsworth, did an amazing job with this piece in terms of, I mean, there's a lot of love put into this movie, and a lot of friends came together to make this movie. So I was really just uh, an extension of that. So Scott McAvoy, the producer, is a very good friend of mine, called me up and asked if I'd read the script. And I basically bookend the piece. I play a, uh, uh, the opening scene and the very last scene. And without giving it all away, I'm sort of the heavy <laughs> It's a good day for singing a song, and it's a good day. Can you open the sunroof, please? It's okay, John. I'll take care of For shining your shoes, and it's a good day for losing the blues. Everything to gain and nothing to lose. A good day from morning till night. I said to the
Cut. It's a very, uh, it's a difficult thing to give away again because I don't want to give away the ending, but there's a twist at the end which kind of changes uh, your perception of who you thought these people were. I, I, I didn't even want to be in this. He forced me to kill Wadsworth. Uh, I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I've had enough. This is too much! <laughs> That's gonna do it for me, man. I love being here. Okay. <laughs>